semi-automatic, hand pump friendly, and fully regulated. Coming up. AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Seven hundred is to bolt on one hundred and fifty. This, I feel like I can do a one-handed, and I can still. Operations manager already. I've done a full tuning guide on this on my PD10. Granted, we're talking a twenty-five yard cut. The Benjamin Marauder Semi-Automatic is made in the USA and is technically the third generation of America's best-selling PCP air gun, the Marauder Bolt Action. That one is available in 177, 22, and 25, and this one currently comes in 22. The semi-automatic version measures 43 inches long. By itself, it weighs 8.6 pounds, or 7.6 pounds when opting for the soon-to-come synthetic stock. Around that same time, the standard lumber on the Marauder will be switching over to Turkish Walnut, courtesy Benjamin's new partnership with Reximex Turkey. The stock you see here is days are numbered, and it's made from beechwood. To include a scope, mounts, and cylinder filled with air, this one weighed in at 10.2 pounds shoot ready. The semi-automatic ships with a newly designed 10-shot magazine that is not backwards compatible with the bolt action. Neither is the new semi-automatic tech. It cannot be retrofitted to your non-semi-auto. An owner's manual and a 30-foot factory QC test target is also included, but it's important to note. Every batch of barrels gets 30-yard factory tested before advancing to the line for assembly. Once put together, every single gun gets accuracy tested at 30 feet. Today, we'll check that at 50 and 100. The new Marauder Semi-Automatic comes with a 5-year factory warranty and Benjamin's legendary customer service. And depending on the stock you go with, you can pick one up for between 700 and 730 bucks. All semi-automatic Marauders come standard with a non-adjustable factory Benjamin regulator tuned to 2000 PSI. Their air reservoir has been lengthened by 2 inches to accommodate this regulator, and not give up any of its 215cc capacity to the less expensive non-regulated bolt action version. So. When one fills this tank to its 3,000 PSI max, you'll enjoy 59 regulated shots with an extreme spread of 19 and a standard deviation of 4.5. Power comes in at a mellow 24 foot-pounds, which it accomplishes by pushing a 14.3 grain to an average of 875 feet per second, with that round retaining 19 foot-pounds at 25 yards and 8 foot-pounds at 100. An externally accessible hammer spring adjuster offers a small measure of adjustment on the regulated model, and more on the non-regulated one, perhaps 24 to 26 foot-pounds on the semi-auto. The rifle also takes advantage of a shrouded and baffled 1 in 20 twist rate choked barrel, a Picatinny scope rail, a rear ambi charging handle and forward assist, an underbelly pressure gauge, sling studs, a fixed rubber butt pad, an adjustable comb, an ambidextrous stock, and a dual-stage labeled minimally adjustable lightweight trigger with manual safety that behaves more like a single stage with a super long rolling brake. So, is this new Marauder right for you? 24 foot-pounds or 875 feet per second with a 22 cal 14 grain is coming out of the gate at a disadvantage. 30 foot-pounds is kind of the norm for being able to cheat the wind at 50 and 100 in a 22 cal or 850 to 875 feet per second with an 18 grain. With the 16 grain pellet you see here chugging along at 835 feet per second, I managed to keep 50 yard deflection to just an inch or so with a 2 to 3 mile an hour crosswind. With the 14 grain Crossman Premier Dome pellet that this gun's barrel and engine was designed around, I wasn't able to get it to 50 yards stabilized no matter the conditions. But I had a little more success with the Crossman Premier Domed Copper Plated. The 18 grain variants are another one that refuse to 50 yards stabilize, wind or not. So for 25 yard work, a 14 grain will work just fine in this Marauder, as will several others. But for 50 and 100, you're much better off just dealing with the drop and experimenting with the various 16 grain offerings. 
The only pellet that I got to 50 yard perform was the Rangemaster Sovereign 15.89 grain, made by JSB. And it stayed stable out of this gun all the way out past 100 yards, even in a strong crosswind. That's the mark of the right pellet for any given barrel. And of course, your mileage is bound to vary. So you'll need to do your own experimenting. I repeated the test in a little bit more aggravated 4 to 8 mile an hour wind. As with before, they're out of my 9 o'clock and occasionally swirling from my 6. So the push is to the right and occasionally up and to the right, as a tailwind has a tendency to lift. But I don't see any evidence that this is the way Benjamin has intended this new semi-automatic Marauder to be used. For distance and precision work, the bolt action Marauder is more capable, more powerful, and has a significantly better trigger. This isn't that. I foresee the semi-auto version excelling as a close range pester. Not sure why, but I'm envisioning a target rich environment like a barn plagued with multiple rats. Under that circumstance and similar, this rifle is going to make a lot of people smile. It's incredibly fun and totally addicting to shoot it quickly. And no matter what I fed it or how fast I flung it, I absolutely wasn't able to trip up this semi-automatic mechanism once I got past the 75 shot break-in period. After that, it was smooth sailing for over 750 rounds. That is till I blew the o-ring out of it, <laughs> but that's an easy repair. <clears throat> Benjamin, you should really be shipping these guns with spare o-rings. That shot four is where the wind came around and swirled from behind me, pushing the pellet up and no longer to the right, hence the caveat of a 24 foot pound 22. With the semi automatic triggers and all of my powder burners breaking at, say, between four and seven pounds, I really have no room to be complaining about the semi-automatic trigger in the new Marauder. Its brake weight, or should I say, more accurately, pull rate, pull weight arrived at like two pounds. And that is a great thing. Where my disappointment came in is that the trigger in this semi-automatic Marauder is a far departure from the one that we've become accustomed to in the bolt action Marauder. That one is a true dual stage match grade, fully adjustable trigger that can be easily set up for match work or competition work or any sort of precision work. This is far from that. This arrived with a very short uh, first stage take up, a really, really long second stage roll, and then it just kind of goes off. There's no indicator. You just have to kind of have that timing learned or memorized in your brain. Now, you can refer to the instructions in the owner's manual and you can get that pull weight down to about a, a pound, which is also impressive. And for more on that, you can check me out on my other YouTube channel, AEAC Vlog. I take you through that there. But, um, well here, check it out. So the first stage take up after getting the trigger more to my liking is better. It uh, comes up against a nice hard stop. It's resettable as you can see. The challenge comes in this long second stage roll without a stop before it just goes off. And what makes it so hard is when you're trying to do precision work at 50 or say 100 yards like you see me doing out here, it's really just kind of a big guessing game and you never really know exactly when that lead's gonna go down range. The semi-automatic action in this barrel, in this gun, are incredibly true. So your success shooting it is going to completely come from mastering this new trigger. Wow. 
one pound, three ounces. If you're new here, I've got two YouTube channels and every product I receive for review gets two videos. A classroom style learning discovery and approach vid over on my other YouTube channel, AEAC Vlog, and an application of that learning and a further testing of that product on this YouTube channel, AEAC Home. The two channels and two videos are designed to work together to cover all of the information and to cater to the different learning styles of my audience. So to be included on everything that I've learned about this gun, you gotta watch both videos. I'm still getting a lot of questions that I've already put in a lot of hard work to get answered for you guys. And I'm gonna share a story with you about reliability and, and what I found. But this forward assist, it's also important for you to know, this is not a forward assist. Aftermarket moderators are an important part of air gunning, and they're used for tuning devices as much as they are for sound reduction. The more powerful the gun, the more they reduce sound and contribute to pellet stability. In the case of our 24 foot-pound Marauder, which is already baffled and shrouded out of the factory, it's only going to reduce sound output by about 3 decibels. But if this 22 were shooting at 30 foot-pounds, that reduction would be more like 5 decibels. And at 45 foot-pounds, they'd be more like 8. The takeaway is that they have their place, especially at higher power levels, and that this gun feeds reliably with them. With only 24 foot-pounds of energy to worry about, the OEM baffled shroud does a great job at swallowing up any noise that comes out of this end. But the reality of the situation is all of the sound that's emitted from this gun comes from the hammer smack in the valve, and that comes from this end. That being said, there is a little bit of room for improvement, such as with this aftermarket moderator by 0DB. Don AFL will make the adapter you'll need. Don AFL also offers his own line of moderators, like this Sumo. A great tool for learning to shoot in the wind is the Action Armor Quadrant Target. It's also incredibly helpful when culling for the right pellet. It'll save you lots of 25, 50, and 100 yard walking, and a bunch of money on paper targets. Unlike other steel reactive targets, it shows you where you miss, not just when. It's fully compatible with Action Armor Shoot to Reset targets, and with a semi-automatic marauder, it's a guaranteed good time and it claims to stand up to 100 plus foot-pound air guns. You can pick one up at Air Guns of Arizona for around 100 bucks. If you want to learn more about that sticky charging handle that came back on me after a repair, hit me up on my other YouTube channel, AEAC Vlog. Refilling the regulated Marauders 215cc air reservoir is a pretty straightforward deal. And if you're on the hand pump, may be a better option for you than the non-regulated version. Reason being, the working pressure of the regulated version is from 3,000 pounds down to 2,000 pounds of air, and then it falls off that reg. Whereas with the non-regulated version, you've probably got a working pressure from 3,000 down to 1,500-ish, so you're going to be doing more refilling to get the same or not as good a result because the regulator increases the efficiency of the gun or the efficiency of the usage of air. Either way, the 3,000 to 1,000 PSI green means go on the gauge is misleading. 
When you're ready, slowly fill to no more than 3,000 PSI. And then once again, when pressure falls just below 2,000 PSI. When you're done, bleed the air between your fill source and the gun. Disconnect and replace your dust cover. That is all there is to it. For eyes today, I'm running the Optison CP10x32P. It's a fixed magnification ultra compact AO scope. Its adjustable magnification counterpart is the CP 3 to 12 by 32P. Both are badass. Here in the States, you can find them at Utah Air Guns, Southern Precision Air Weapons, and Trainier Outdoors. They go for 300 to 350 bucks. As with Optison in general, AO ranging is very good, but this one was off a tad at 100 yards. The reticle responded to inputs as it should, and as with all Optisons, the glass and reticle are always super bright and clear. Well, that is all for today, guys. And special thanks to Benjamin Air Guns, Sports Match Rings UK, Optison Sport Optics, Zero DB Silencers, Dania Fell Moderators, and Air Guns of Arizona for getting all of this into my hands to review for you. You guys know the best way to thank them for that one. Now, from here, you all want to head on over to the Air Gun Nation forum so that you can participate in the discussion thread on the Benjamin Marauder Semi-Automatic. I'll leave you a link on how to get there in the description down below. So with that, I'm Steve Shally. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great week everyone.